Time now for our big board here with our team of insiders to take on today's top stories. We're going to start with this battle over Prince's estate. You've got heirs, potential heirs and lawyers gathering for a court hearing in Minnesota. I want to talk about that now with our senior legal correspondent, Sonny Haas. And Sonny, a lot of money on the line here. It could be about $300 million. So what does this judge need to do? This judge needs to determine, George, who's related to Prince and how much of the estate they are entitled to. Do you know why? Because it appears that Prince died without a will. Mm. Representatives have looked through thousands and thousands of boxes. They have found nothing. And when there is no will, the battle begins. Prince had eight siblings, six of them are still alive, and get this, George, 20 other people have come forward making claims to his estates. Now, of course, DNA uh, evidence has now uh, canceled out the fact that there's a Colorado prison inmate that claimed to be Prince's son. He is not Prince's son, but the battle continues. Yes, yeah, Sonny, Sonny just said, so many siblings, people coming out of the woodwork. The judge has made it very clear he's in no rush to make any decisions on this. So, Sonny, how long could something like this take to sort out? Look, it could take months. It could even take years. This judge has made it clear that he's going to take his time to make the right determination. The problem with that, Lara, is that the longer this takes, the more money his estate loses. We're talking about a $300 million estate right now, but we know that Prince had a lot of debt and he also had a huge tax bill. The takeaway is people, people, please, please, Make your will. Yeah, you it's gotta amazing have that he didn't have a, a will, but at the same time, you're right, the state's losing money. At the same time, it's also going to be making a lot more money with yep. all, the, all, the, all the songs that continue to be sold. That's true. That's true. It's still remarkable, though, what Sonny just said. Great advice, Sonny, about getting a will and Incredible. someone that successful. Never, not, no will. Shocking. It's really shocking. Sonny, always great to see you. Thank you so much for coming in and filling us in on that one. want to move along now to... The holiday weekend, the traffic, and thank goodness for low, ga low gas prices, a record number of people expected to hit the road this 4th of July. I don't know if she is or not, but she sure knows a lot about it. Paula Froelich, travel <laughs> expert, founder of abroadabroad.com. Love that name. Great to see you, Paula. So what gives? Why so much more traffic this year? Well, you know, gas prices are way down. And get this, Lara, there are 43 million people traveling and 36 million people that are going to be on the road. That's over 10% of the population driving. Okay, so what should we do this weekend? Not drive. Well, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, stay home. Just kidding. Listen, if you can take a staycation, take a staycation. But also understand that for some magical unicorn reason, you are not going to not miss the traffic. It is going to be there. You know what's coming up. So start the yogic breathing now and just get ready. Plan ahead. Understand things are going to take a long while. And if you can leave at a weirdo hour, mm -hmm. do it. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, advice. Paula. You can also go to Wimbledon. It could be part of the record books. It is starting right now. Women's training champion Serena Williams. You see her right there. She's set to take center court just moments from now. And we're joined by Patrick McEnroe from ESPN. Going for her 22nd Grand Slam title. Patrick ranked number one, but a lot of intense competition there. Well, there always is, George. Hey, I'm just a dude abroad over here at Wimbledon, and I'm loving every <laughs> second of it. Serena Williams has felt the pressure a bit this year at the other majors. French Open, she lost in the final. Australian Open, she lost in the final. I think it's weighing on her the pressure to get to number 22 to finally tie Steffi Graf. When you hear it here first, she will do it here at Wimbledon. She will win her, the Wimbledon title here. It will be her seventh, and she will tie Steffi Graf with number 22. Wow. Please. That is tough talk, and I like what I'm hearing, Patrick. That is great. I want to ask you uh, about the men's side. <laughs> Going out on a limb, Lara. I love that, though. You got to. She, she's our girl. Uh, on the men's side, Novak Djokovic <laughs> looking to do what Serena could not do last year, complete the calendar Grand Slam. Right. No one's done it since Rod Laver. Is this his year? Well, I think, it, look, in some ways, Larry, it's, it already is his year because he now holds all four major titles, which hasn't been done since Rod Laver did it in 69. 
finally he was able to win the French Open for the first time. So he comes here to Wimbledon where he's won the last two titles. I love his chances, but look out for Andy Murray, who's got Yvonne Lendl back in his camp. And there's another former great player. What's his name? Oh, yeah, John McEnroe, yeah. who's with the big Canadian, Milos <laughs> Raonic. So all the former greats are trying to figure out a way to stop Novak Djokovic. I think Murray's got the best chance, but I don't think Djokovic is going to feel the pressure the way Serena did yeah. last year at the U.S. Open. Of course, if he gets there, having won Wimbledon as well, then maybe that's where he starts to feel it. Patrick, I'm not sure that Djokovic feels pressure. I'm not sure that's something that he has to deal with. Well, listen, as your previous guest said, you know, do, he does a lot of yoga. You know, he goes to the Buddhist <laughs> temple up here. I mean, it's not just about the serves and, you know, getting himself ready physically. I mean, it's all about the mind, and we sort of laugh. But you know what? He's got everything dialed in. I saw him running through the village here, just up the hill here over the weekend. He was as casual, as relaxed as could be, just taking a little jog all by himself. No posse, no security, just jogging through Wimbledon Village. That seems like a good way to get ready to win your third consecutive title here so that's our takeaway for today you got to be zen <laughs> yeah it's all <laughs> about you, that all namaste to all three of you <laughs> we thank you lots of great information there and of course you can watch Wimbledon today on ESPN thank you Patrick um, it is on ESPN you can also watch the ESPN app we want to thank Patrick we want to thank Paula and of course Sunny